Compton was the American dream. Sunny California, with a palm tree in the front yard, the camper, the boat. Temptingly close to the Los Angeles ghetto in the 50s and 60s, it became the black American dream. Open housing paved the way as middle-class blacks flooded into the city. Whites don't buy houses in Compton anymore. Now, with 74% of the population, black power is the fact of life, from banks to bowling alleys. But the dream that many blacks thought they were buying has turned sour. Though the mayor and four out of five city councilmen are black, they have been unable to solve the problems of crime and growing welfare, which is slowly turning suburban Compton into an extension of the black inner city. Crime is now as high as the ghetto. 47 homicides last year gave Compton one of the highest per capita rates in the country. Juvenile gang activity, muggings, small robberies make some blacks want to leave. Compton officials blame outsiders for much of their crime problem, but there is general agreement the police force is undermanned. When the gang problem got out of hand in the high schools, parents volunteered to help tutor and counsel students, and the situation cooled. But crime is just one of Compton's unique problems. Poor families, many on welfare, moved to the suburb expecting to find work. Instead, they found unemployment, and the welfare rolls have grown. City leaders have tried to stop the trend. Two years ago, they annexed 540 acres of industrial park, a new source of factories, taxes, and potential jobs. But there is yet another reason some blacks are moving out of Compton. Rising taxes may be a complaint found in every suburb, but Compton has an additional problem. Low-income housing attracts families from the inner city. Many are unable to keep up mortgage payments, and when the homes are abandoned, the property declines. Suddenly, the middle-class black, who moved here in the first place to get away from the problems of the ghetto, would like to move again. It is ironic for the whites who stayed in Compton, now watching both whites and blacks moving out. As they wanted this city, now they've got it. Black leaders say they got the shell of a city at the bottom of a 20-year economic decline. City leaders know the problems, and they have programs working on them. But in six years of control, they have learned there are no magic solutions just because blacks are in power. Bill Curtis... CBS News, Compton, California. Yeah, this is Lonnie Cox, COX. Right. You mentioned to me before that you'd like to leave Compton. Uh, why? Well, like I said before, I'm looking for better things. You know, I don't want to stay still. I'm trying to progress, you know. And uh, if I can find anything better anywhere else, I'd be glad to move out of Compton. You know? What's wrong here? Well, uh several things wrong we need uh, I guess we need more law enforcement and uh, well so far we we had a lot of gang activities but all that's settled down now you know we've talked we've we've talked to a uh, few guys on the street here in which Peru runs a long ways but they seem to think that this is the only street that uh, is causing all the confusion you know but overloaded schools and uh, the, the the homes in L.A. they they are paying less taxes, and the blacks who would like to move out of this city, why is that? Well, uh, I can't explain that. Uh, I know we've that's something I just can't explain. I don't know. It's because of violence, uh, but we have violence in L.A. Like I said, and people are moving out of L.A. Also, you know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it's it's rough all over, really, and Compton just seemed to have the name because it's just a, uh, I guess because it's the majority of them is black and everything happened uh, in all black neighborhood. It, it seems to bear right down on uh, a little stronger than it would if it was in L.A. You know. What do you think about the uh, the black leadership of the city, the mayor, city council? Well, I don't know that much about him, so I, mm -hmm. I really couldn't comment on him. Okay. But. Uh, I know we need better law enforcement. I know this, you know. So if uh, he can do anything to help that, uh, and he's not doing anything, I think he's failing there, you know. Okay, Lonnie. This is Alan H A uh, A L L A N H A R D E N Harden. Um, blacks are moving out of Compton. Why? What's what's wrong? It was more like, hey, it's more like too much of crime and people's walking down the street getting shot. And it's more like you can't do hardly nothing without getting shot. 
car, even getting jumped on. So like, the majority is more like want to live out, move out of Compton, and move in some Prison. And it seems like uh, this is really a dream city, and blacks thought Compton was a dream city. You know, at one time. Yeah, it's a dream city, but you know, like it's a dream city. The street itself is quiet, but once like you have other people outside us coming, us, you want to take over something. Like, what else can you do? So you just move away from it. Well, I'm not going to move away. I said, but that way I'm not going to move. Why? Why the crime? Why? Why these problems? Do you think? You got me. You got me. I don't know if it's more like it's a gang raid or what. I'm trying to see who's the baddest or what. I don't know. I really can't say. You know, as blacks move from Watts, let's say, into Compton, is it a behavioral thing or? Uh, you know, is it the poor black? Is it blacks who just don't like other kinds of blacks moving? I don't know. You gotta ask Dennis. Dennis okay, Dennis. More about, about Watts. Oh well, it's not that blacks don't like well, blacks. Well, let me start that over. All right. Okay. It's not that blacks don't like blacks. It's just that uh, the brothers on the street they're here to protect the street, and the youngsters that's smaller than them that live here. That's what they're here for. Why do the people want to move? Why do the people want to move? I don't see, it's not too many people have been moving off this street, really. It's, well, the, around the community. Yes. The reason they are moving is because of the violence that happens on the streets. Okay. The muggings and killings and things like that. Well, if that's what you want to say, yeah. Okay, once again, why the violence? Why the violence? Well, there is really no violence here. Because the, because the people on this street, they're like united together. Hmm. And they protect the street only. How about in the community? Well, other communities, I mean, other communities no, outside here, of the, No, in Compton. Well, I don't see too much violence here myself. Well, all, it do happen at night. Mm -hmm. And which, that's when the outsiders come in mm -hmm. and try to take over, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why the violence, you know, they're here to protect. Okay. Okay. You know, well, like I was saying, you, you, you was asking about violence. But uh, when I first moved to Compton, it was violence here then, and the majority was white. And uh, when we went to school, when, when we went to school at Compton High School, your parents had to carry to school because the whites was jumping on the blacks. So violence has been here all the no, time. No, it's a black violence. Well, it's, yeah, it's a black violence, but uh, I guess they don't have anything else to do. Give them something to participate in, and they wouldn't have all this violence, mm -hmm. you know. So. You were leading to a point that I uh, <laughs> threw you off the track. Uh, we were we were talking. Uh, what were we talking about? Why? Well, because I think if the mayor had a chance to do what he wanted to do, it would probably be a better city. I don't know if it was a something about some money once that the mayor uh, suppose that messed over. Come to find out that. Uh, well, from what I heard, from what I gather, in Compton, it's just rough. You know, it's rough out here. What they're doing, they they let us buy these homes. We move in, and they study raising taxes on us every year. And they know uh, you have to qualify to get in a home, number one. And once you get into the home, uh, you have to be making so much, you know, to qualify. And once you get into them, they're raising taxes on you every year. Eventually, you'll lose your home, you know. And this is what they got set up now where, I mean, we got a lot of empty houses out here. The, the Callaway, C-A-L-L-A-W. Oh, yeah, right. Ten years ago, whites were leaving the city in droves. Um, open housing, blacks were coming in from the center of L.A., that was the migration pattern. It was sort of a dream city. And blacks now have 72% of the population. Uh, really, black power exists here in the establishment. Police, fire department, mayor, city council. How have blacks done in governing themselves in Compton? And, and in answering that, you can kind of give me a description of Compton, where it stands today. Well, I, I think my description of uh, Compton over the past 10 years has been very uh, positive. Uh, I've been in the wig business in downtown Compton here for about eight years, and uh, I've seen a change uh, in the downtown area of uh, Compton. Uh, the people are still shopping here. Uh, the merchants are still making money here. Uh, there have been very few uh, uh, changes uh, by talking to the merchants uh, in the community. We all uh, stand here and we're sticking it out. 
but uh, with a little bit more support, uh, a little bit of the positive side, uh, we feel as if we can do even better. Uh, I came to Compton in 1958. I played football at Compton College. Uh, it was a predominantly white community. And uh, I love Compton, and this is why uh, I stayed here in Compton and made my home. Okay, good. Here in Compton. And uh, on the, uh, the problem, uh, it's about five or six guys on the Compton Police Department that played football with me at the college. And the reason they are still here because they have an interest in the community, and they are really uh, under manpower at the police department. This is what they feel that they need. They need more help because they're... You've they're, hired a security guard here, haven't you, up and down the streets? Yes, we have security up and down the street to give our customers a little bit more security. Uh, we had security on Manchester and Broadway in 1965 uh, before the Watts riot. Uh, you don't see uh, these type of problems, but security comes to Compton six years, say five years later, and then it's a big issue. Compton needs uh, uh, security. Uh, I have a store in the Crenshaw in Santa Barbara area. We had security over there before Compton. And so I don't feel as if the news media have been fair to Compton based on this, uh, by me having stores in these uh, locations. Uh, I've never been held up here in Compton. I've never had a hold up. I don't think there have been too many holdups on the downtown merchants in Compton compared to Manchester and Broadway, Crenshaw and Santa Barbara. And I think with a little bit more of the positive signs that uh, Compton can come back and be a much better uh, community from the outside because uh, it's here. It's known world over. Anywhere I go, people know of Compton because of the Compton Relay, uh, relay uh, the great football teams. Uh, it's positive. So with a little help. From the Chamber of Commerce. I want you to go back if we can. You're here three months, and you said you had a lot of misgivings uh, about Compton. What were they? Well, I'm like a lot of people sitting on the outside. I believe everything I read in the newspapers. And uh, uh, frankly, because uh, Compton is a very unique city, uh, it's one of the very few major cities in America that uh, has 75% black population, majority black government. As a matter of fact, for all intents and purposes, it is the major American city that is, in fact, uh, a total black uh, or a majority black operated city. Uh, I had, when I was invited to come in and take over the Chamber of Commerce here, I expected the worst, frankly. I was, you know, I had visions of slums and all this sort of thing. And frankly, in the three months that I have been here, I have found that that ain't necessarily so. Uh, I found that uh, that Compton is uh, basically, uh, unlike a lot of cities, uh, 60 percent of the people, the residents of this city, own their own homes. We have a, a, a fairly high medium income uh, throughout the entire city. Uh, we find that uh, that the uh, the blacks who are uh, controlling city government, your school boards, and all of your various uh, uh, associations and committees and, and uh, in in the area, are very knowledgeable and uh, very uh, capable people, uh, which surprised me. I mean. Uh, as a neophyte in this type of a situation, I had uh, I didn't realize that uh, uh, that that in the in the black community there was so much uh, really business and, and acumen available. How about experience? Experience. Experience within the black government here. Well, uh, let's put it this way: uh, they are the. Uh, the black hasn't had an opportunity up until just recently to become active in government, so he is uh, learning as he participates, let's put it this way. But uh, you can quote me, they're, they're learning fast. I, I mean, I sit at a city council meeting or a planning commission meeting, and, and I, I'm amazed at, uh, at the, the foresight and, and the, the business sense of the, of, the, of the people in charge. You found problems also when you came here. Problems? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, 
don't we all find problems? You show me that any city in America doesn't have problems, and I'll move out tomorrow. Uh, we all have problems. Uh, Compton, sure, Compton has problems. Uh, Compton has undergone in the past uh, uh, 10, 15 years uh, quite a change. I mean, we have... Uh, uh, this city has had a metamorphosis, if you may, if you will, from uh, at one time Compton was the the hub city of Southern California. It was a, a uh, medium income, uh, solid white community that was uh, known throughout the whole West. Uh, then, uh, as the uh, after World War II. Uh, the, uh, the the black population started moving into the city of Compton over a period of years to the extent that today it's 75 percent black. And um, in all of this change, uh, certainly there were, uh, there's been a little neglect and there's been a, you've overlooked a lot of things that are necessary in the progress of a, of a good American type progressive city. We, I have found uh, that the basic thing that uh, we need in Compton uh, is a, a more unified effort on the part of all of the organizations, all of the citizens, citizens the commerce, the industry, and the city government uh, towards a, a developing a spirit of uh, pride of community and a spirit of pride in the appearance of our community. Like most uh, cities, uh, we've neglected our housekeeping. And uh, the well, chain, yeah. why is that? I wonder. Is that a carryover from the ghetto of Watts, from from old habits? Well, now let's put the, when you talk about the ghetto of Watts. Uh, uh, Watts is a, it's a name, you know, that was affiliated with the. Uh, well, well, don't let me throw you off the track. Um, uh, is that a carryover from uh, the poorer sections of the blacks who came from? a welfare condition, let's say, in that Watts area, and moved into Compton. Yes, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, of the blacks uh, who are, uh, a lot of them are on welfare, who have uh, moved into our area into comparatively low, uh, tie, low rates of, uh, of, of rental units, uh, a lot of them, you know, federally funded. And uh, these people, uh, they just don't have the pride of ownership because they're, they're, they're dealing with an absentee landlord who doesn't particularly care about uh, the appearance of his property as long as he gets the rent in. And a lot of these people are, have never lived in a home before, and they, uh, it isn't like owning your own home. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of them that don't supervise their children as well as they should. They let them mess around and uh, uh, degrade the, 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 the environment in which they live. And this is uh, one thing that we're trying to correct. Now, this isn't true uh, the, of the city of Compton. We have uh, pockets here and there, like every city has, that need attention. Basically, the city as a whole is in pretty good shape. But there are areas that do need a uh, little housekeeping attention, like all cities do. And uh, we in intend to see that this is done because, yes. A lot of communities have had these problems before. As you say, in the past, you're not unique. One reason that people have been looking to Compton is because, for the first time, black power really exists. The mm -hmm. mayor, the city council, black leadership. Mm -hmm. and. Why haven't they been able to come to grips with these problems? Why? You mean the black leadership? Well, I would say this, that it isn't a question of not being able to come to grips. Uh, they just haven't uh, realized until just now possibly the basic importance of what we're talking about as far as good housekeeping is concerned. They have been so busy learning the business of government and negotiating uh, with, the, with uh, the housing and urban development branches of the federal government for the necessary funds to uh, set up a model cities uh, uh, operation in the city, set up redevelopment agencies, and, and they have been concentrating more on that aspect of it and sort of neglecting uh, leaving it up to the citizen to uh, take care. Like I told a bunch of citizens the other day, I said, look, uh, you can't expect five councilmen at City Hall to put the show on the road that, like we're talking about. They didn't foul it up. 
uh, um, to the condition that it's in. It's the pe it's the people themselves. So what we're pro advocating is the time is now for a do-it-yourself rehabilitation drive in the city of Compton, involving every man, woman, and child, to clean it up, paint it up, pick up the paper off the street, and get rid of the cans and the garbage. And uh, if the house needs painting, let's do it. Their task has been really pretty difficult, isn't it? Very uh, difficult. An influx of uh, new blacks into this area. They've had to deal with all kinds of things. Uh, problems almost that have been uh, tougher than other suburbs. Yes, that's true. It's uh, they've, uh, They have had uh, problems that are unique to, uh, I can think of no other community in, the, in America because you cannot compare Compton with a lot of the eastern ghetto type areas. Uh, I want to emphasize once again. Can you compare it to suburbs, the white suburbs? Can I compare it to white suburbs? Well, uh, yes, I can. Uh, you know, what type of comparison well, do you thinking, want with a white suburbs? I was suburb? thinking, uh, if we compare it with white suburbs, what are the unique problems that make it different? The unique problem? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the white suburbs uh, in, in this area are basically all new subdivisions, planned communities with uh, ample housing. Uh, by that I mean four and five bedroom homes, uh, uh, you know, and larger. We don't have that in Compton. Compton is 85 years old. And we have a lack of that of the type of uh, of, uh, of affluent uh, housing, if you will, uh, that is prevalent in the in the suburbs. So what we have to do is come in and renovate an 85 year old city uh, to to meet our needs. Uh, we. Uh, we very, very badly need uh, 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 homes, uh, upgraded homes. We have a, a very affluent group of people in this city, your businessmen, your professional men, who I'm sure would love to live in Compton, but they can afford and they demand something a little better than just the, the type of residence that's available to them. Homes are upgraded by um, upper or middle class. The, the the other suburbs have rather affluent, as you say, right. white job holders. Mm -hmm. You have an influx of uh, rather poor people from, let's say, a ghetto or slum condition, comparatively, in, in Los Angeles. As we've been talking about, this problem is rather difficult to, to deal with. Is this going to become just uh, another slum, unable to? Absolutely not. And I'm going to challenge that particular statement. We don't have an influx of uh, what you talk ghetto type people from the slums into Compton. We have here and there in some of our older housing owned by absentee landlords, uh, people that are on poverty uh, or on the poverty rolls uh, that are brought in here. Uh, uh, and of course, we have to welcome them. They're part of our community and we have to work and get along with them. But the majority of the people in Compton are a fairly affluent society, and they own their own homes. And well, the point I'm trying to make is that somebody white is running a chamber of commerce for a black city. No, I don't think so. Uh, like I said a minute ago, I was sent in here to integrate Compton. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, uh, our chamber of commerce... Uh, we have, uh, I have a 20 to 24 man board of directors, uh, a, good per, a good percentage uh, of the uh, members of my board of directors are, are blacks. Uh, we don't even think about that situation around here. I mean, I'm sorry you asked this question, uh, but uh, uh, actually, um, uh, the majority of the the people that I represent, the the commercial and the and the industrial and the professional, and the utility banks and savings and loan people, uh, the majority of of the the leaders of the, of the of these uh, different organizations are are white, and. Uh, Frankly, the, the, the black-white situation is a, is a fabric of the imagination as far as we're, we don't think about it. I have a, I have a, uh, we go out to social affairs, we have a, a, an installation of our, our chamber officers uh, next Monday. 
and uh, we'll sit down and socialize and uh, the, the color situation is just non-existent around here. Well, you said that the black community does not support black merchants. This is true. Why? I can't answer that question. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, a lot of your, your, your black editorialists have been writing on that subject and uh, they can't uh, analyze it. They are appealing right now to the uh, to the blacks to uh, to support. Uh, I think possibly it might be this situation uh, because of these uh, of the background of our America. Let's face it: the bigotry we've had in America. Your black businessmen have not had the opportunity to build up their. Uh, great corporations uh, and, and, and to get the know-how that it takes to do business in, in modern America. It's the same thing where you, uh, uh, I doubt very much if you could find uh, really a, a black chamber executive because there just hasn't been up until now any call for, for them. I, I will say this. Uh, that uh, that there are right now at our Santa Clara training for, for chamber of commerce industries, a lot of your of your of your black scholars are going in there and taking, and eventually they will be welcome uh, into into the profession. Uh, but the thing is, uh, 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 there's two things uh, uh, as far as the as a black businessman is concerned. A lot of them are not. Uh, knowledgeable about modern business practices, and they don't have the uh, the organization behind them like some of your big chain store operations have. And somehow or other, the uh, uh, as these uh, editorialists have, have uh, been trying to bring out, uh, the the black uh, are just not uh, uh, supporting the black merchant, the black uh, po population. Two. Final questions. One on gangs. Uh, what is the gang problem here, the crime problem? Why is it higher, I suppose, than elsewhere? Well, I'll question that. Uh, it's higher uh, in theory, uh, on paper. You read it in the paper. Sure, we have problems. Show me a city that doesn't have problems. Uh, our youth today... Uh, uh, they're not gangs in the real sense of the word, like you you find back east. But there are a lot of a lot of young people that are in college or in school and so forth. Not particularly college, more in the elementary and junior and the high school areas. That uh, the basic educational system hasn't appealed to them. A lot of them are high school dropouts, and when they drop out of high school, they have nothing to do. They're not trained for a job, so they hang around the peripheries of the high school, not attending, and they get together in Misery Loves Company, and they set up a kind of a group that they, we, we call gangs, and uh, uh, they get, to, like all kids do, you and I did it when we were kids, we have, you know, the guy on the next block, we'd uh, fight back and forth. Uh, so this is a situation uh, that's true. Uh, all over uh, central Los Angeles, east and south and west. And uh, a lot of these, uh, these kids, they, they move from the school to school and they, they set up, uh, uh, they, they'll pick a fancy name and they'll have a, a gang of branches all, all over. They're not organized, really, like uh, in the true sense of a gang. But they drive around, they're on wheels, and they drove from one community to the other, and they get in their little frays and fracases, and unfortunately, uh, occasionally, uh, we have, uh, have problems. There's been some shootings and that sort of thing. That's no, I, let's don't dwell on it. There are more important no. things. I agree with you. Uh, there are other major cities around the country that are turning all black, or a majority of black. Is Compton the wave of the future? What can we learn from the experience here? Well, I think what you can learn, learn a couple of things. Number one, that contrary to popular opinion, the blacks are very capable of operating and running a city. Number two, and I, I mean this sincerely in my conversation, frankly, the blacks don't want a total black city. Blacks want integration. 
And the, the thing that makes a total black city, and I'm going to say this with, 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 with impunity, that what makes a black city like Compton or a black city like any other city that may be evolving is just a bunch of bigoted whites. And I mean that sincerely. Because why, why, why can't they get along? I'm getting along great here. And I'm this is Charles Miller, who is assistant city manager. Compton has some unique problems. Uh, let's talk about them. What are they? What can you tell us? Uh, yes, Compton does have unique problems. I think the essential feature of Compton's unique problems is that it's a city in transition, and it represents a city that uh, approximately 10 years ago was almost all white, and now it's uh, 74 to 75 percent black, with approximately 15 to 18 percent Mexican Americans, and the rest white and other. Now, this transition means that it's unique in that the kinds of things that have happened to cities that have changed ethnically in a, in a very uh, large way has resulted in, uh, I'd say, a cornucopia of problems that didn't uh, previously exist. Mike Lott. Uh, problems, first of all, uh, we have to recognize that in our society there still exists um, a double standard with regard uh, to white and non-white persons. This means that the change from white to non-white in Compton has brought forth all the kinds of things engendered by these, what I would uh, term very frankly, racist feelings. Now, in addition to that, we have a period of approximately 20 years in which a downtrend in the economy has taken place. This means that at the inception of the, quote, new regime, we suddenly find ourselves at the bottom end of the downtrend. And uh, people assign a causal relation to this with respect to the ethnic changes that have taken place. So the black leaders took over the downtrend or the shell of a city when they came in here? I would say that's essentially so, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to sound as if um, everything bad that has occurred has occurred uh, at the point when the uh, black leadership took over. I think that um, the uniqueness of the problems also is represented by the fact that the whole country, particularly our cities, are faced with the kinds of problems that Compton is faced with. And what makes Compton unique, as I said before, is the superimposing of the, of the black power structure on the situation. And I think that's uh, the essential factor. Now, how have they done by by assuming the by, by excuse me by blacks becoming the establishment? Well, I think that uh, first of all, blacks have not yet become the establishment. I think it's too early to assign that uh, title. However, I think we're in a period of transition now, both with respect to the changes that are occurring in the city, the changes that have occurred in the leadership, and the settling in of the incumbents. And I feel that uh, things have been. Uh, pretty good, but really and truly, uh, you talk about expertise, experience, track. Because some lower class blacks are moving in to get away. I think if a person is sufficiently middle class, whether or not he's black or not, he tends to uh, demonstrate his upward mobility by moving into a situation that is more in keeping with his aspirations. So, larger home, uh, uh, better cars, um, better clothing, better diet, um, cultural aspirations, these kinds of things. And I don't think you have to color that black or white. I think that uh, this is America. And when a person uh, is able to uh, earn more money, well, then he's able to uh, not only indulge himself, but to uh, uh, take advantage of what America has to offer. And we have probably uh, the best offering of any country in the world when you have the appropriate economic resources uh, to uh, accomplish that. Do you think we're seeing a new... Do oh, you want me more? No, no, you're okay. Um, are we seeing a new trend? Ten years ago, whites were moving out because blacks were moving in. Now some middle-class blacks are moving out to make uh, because some lower-class blacks are moving in. Is that new? Well, uh, I haven't agreed that uh, middle-class blacks are moving out because of lower-class blacks. I think middle-class people, again, tend to move upward, and uh, it doesn't matter what the ethnicity of the people that they're getting away from. In fact, they're really not so much getting away from as getting to what their aspirations are. Now, I think that this 
trend is occurring now because of the proliferation of opportunities in our economy. For blacks? For all, all Americans. That's so, what I would say. Uh -huh. Why the high crime rate for Compton? Well, again, uh, I think um, that the high crime rate reflects the conditions from which the people who perpetrate the crime spring. And I'm not trying to say that as a cop-out, for example, uh, to say that the person didn't have a father in his home and therefore uh, he went on the crime route. Because what we find is that we get the, the extremes coming from the same uh, general um, uh, home uh, environment. For example, you might have a, a Rhodes Scholar and a, a San Quentin uh, Proley coming out of the same home. So it's too easy to give a simple answer to a question like that. I think it's uh, due to mere uh, problems, myriad conditions, uh, the history of the situation, individual differences in people, acculturation, uh, conditioning, and a number of other factors. And so I don't think you can give a simplistic answer to a complicated question of that kind. What kind of, or what can we learn from Compton as one of the largest black cities under black leadership? Now? I think that uh, we can't learn from Compton until Compton has accomplished things that people can recognize as successes. I feel that some successes have been achieved. However, I think uh, it'll take some time before uh, all of the uh, inputs are in and you can evaluate it. And blacks can govern themselves? Yeah, I think that's the same as saying, can people govern themselves? And if you say people can govern themselves, blacks are people, therefore they certainly can govern themselves. And too often, this speaks to the double standard that I was talking about in our country. See, there are people, and then there are blacks who are regarded as something else. I think if you can look at the humanness of people, you'll see the same uh, uh, components in everybody. And I think if you go to China, you go to India, you go to Okay, my father expects the paper. Any other answers? The paper being the direct object of expects. Okay, do you have any? Okay, some mail. Very good. Okay, good. Okay, controls the machine. Controls being the what? What is controls for part of speech? A verb. Okay, controls the car. Okay, raising a form. Ruben it, Ruben it. Raising the what? Rates? Oh, that's nice. Okay. Number five. The neighbors complain. Is it? Is it complete sentence? Sure it is. Okay. What is complain? What is it? A verb. Okay. Neighbors is what? The subject. The subject of the sentence. Okay. Number six. The rain had stopped. The rain had stopped. Okay. Number seven. The writer requested. Okay, an answer. That's a good one. This is Art and Fran uh, Nygaard, N-Y-G-A-A-R-D, and uh, that's pretty good. That's what they had other class. <laughs> Speaking of class, if we can go in on Art first, Merle, um, let's talk about the black leadership of this city. How would you rate them? I'll wait for the door. How would you rate the black leadership in Compton? Well, I believe they, they are making some progress. There's considerable that to be desired, and I do realize that they have un, a lot of unusual obstacles that some com communities don't have. What are some of the problems that they have to encounter? Well, the, one of the uh, problems, of course, is that uh, the crime rate has um, increased and uh, uh, not enough uh, progress has been made on that. Fran, can you think of any others? Well, I, I don't think we're half as bad as they picture us. 
and as they put in the papers, and they'll uh, put it all over the whole United States as if we're the worst country or worst town, and I don't think we are. And it, it rather burns me up to hear us torn down to the ground when uh, I hear from other people, like a neighbor across the street just came from Detroit. She said, you know, the women don't dare go out after night in Detroit. So she said, I guess they're just as bad off. You can tell me some of these things. For instance, um, you saw a lot of your white friends uh, simply leave and leave you isolated here, didn't you? Yeah, I certainly did. About 90% of them left. Why did you stay? Because we came here 50 years ago because we liked the location. It was a hub called the Hub City at that time where that you could go to Long Beach, Redondo, or to Orange County or Los Angeles, and we were a regular Hub City. Uh, we have less smog than any town anywhere around because the winds come in in the afternoon and blow it over to Whittier and, and Cerritos and a few places like that. You can go up Alameda five miles and get into the smog, and we don't have it here. They called that a white flight, that when the open housing came in and blacks started moving into a community, the whites panicked and left. How do you feel about all that? Well, I think they're a bunch of cowards myself. Uh, there was nothing to be afraid of here any more than there would be any place else. And I think a lot of them used it as excuses. And several have written to me, at, say, at Christmas time, and are sorry that they left. Where they have gone wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Man at the Chamber of Commerce said that really the whites were to blame for the way Compton they is were. now. There was no one put us. Uh, someone the other day said that they wouldn't come into Compton and buy anything. I said, why? Oh, well, we're afraid of Compton. I said, do you think we have an Indian with an arrow behind every tree? And they said, well, not exactly that. I said, then why won't you come down? Well, my husband doesn't want me to come. And I said, now that to me is an, an alibi. You have a car. You go where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Did the whites simply just move out and, and leave yeah, everything? Mm -hmm. One neighbor and then another. In our, uh, there's four blocks where we are, and uh, two, two blocks on either side of the street, and there are only three colored families, two are white widows and ourselves, three of us. Now you're seeing another phenomenon, which is blacks who want to move out of Compton. That's right, and we can't understand that. We just can't understand why they would uh, want to do that. They wanted the town, and some of these people ran out and let them have it, which they, there was room for all of us. Now, next to us, we have the president of the college, and you could never find a nicer man than Abel Sykes is. And we have colored people across the street. And if I want to, when our house was broken into, I called for him, and he came over, and he stayed with me. And, I mean, they're friends. They're real friends. I don't think of them as being colored. They're just friends, that's all. Now, are the black people who want to move out of Compton, uh, do they want to go because of the problems that came in? That's that's the main reason. Uh, they think that the crime rate is too high here, actually. They're as much concerned as anybody else. Yeah, they are mm -hmm. concerned. Yes. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Those across the street from us have put iron bars all over their windows and their doors, and I said, you look like you're in jail. Well, he said, I want my wife protected when I work at night. And I said, well, they don't break in our houses at night. And he said, well, I feel safer that way. Mm -hmm. But Your house is undoubtedly yeah, secure. Your things on. Ours is wired, but I certainly wouldn't have a bar on my window or doors and make it look like I was a jail. Has it ever been broken into? Oh, yes, three or four times. And your store? Yes, yeah, three or four times. But you're still here. Yes. <laughs> Takes more than that to scare us out. <laughs> we still have faith in Compton, and we believe that as things go along, we'll see a lot of progress. Well, do you think the black leadership uh, is going to be able to govern the city and make it livable? If the man that's in there now can't do it, I don't know who can. He is a nice fellow. And, uh, but to me, uh, those that are in leadership in the city hall should live in town here. They shouldn't live up on the top of Palace Verdes Hills or down in Lakewood or someplace like that. If, if our town is good enough to pay them their salaries, it should be a good enough town to live in. I think they have more problems to handle in Compton than another community would. I, I'm sure they do, because uh, the, th the conditions here are unusual. Uh, the community is different from most other communities. 
love. How? <clears throat> in that uh, all of a, in a short space of time, a lot of people have moved in here, and uh, it's been a problem of getting adjusted. Uh, the school situation and all has required a lot of adjusting. I want to ask both this first, Art. Um, Compton is a model city. You know, things start out here on the West Coast and then move east. It has black leadership it has for now six years. Um, what can we learn? What can the rest of the nation learn from this black city that has suddenly become 72% black? Well, now that's the opportunity that Compton has is to show what can be done when the city is all black. And I believe that uh, eventually a lot of progress will be made. Eventually? Yes. It's a little too slow right now, but I still believe Compton has a good future. Fran? You, mean, you want me to tell the truth or otherwise? <laughs> well, uh, so the people that have moved out that I know, you couldn't get them to move back in. They wouldn't do that. I think a reason a lot of people came in here, uh, they were able to purchase houses too cheap. And then when they didn't make their payments, they just let their yards go and didn't take care of them. And then the people next door said, well, the property uh, isn't taken care of and I don't like to live next to thing like that, so I'm going to move out. Then the next thing you knew, these houses that had been sold so cheaply were the windows were all boarded up. Not even coming to this town and riding around, but hardly find a block that their windows weren't boarded up in one or two houses. And that is to keep people from breaking in there and stealing anything they could break loose. But, uh, of course, uh, they, I think they've, the federal government has learned a little bit there to not be quite so lenient in letting people in uh, with small down payments and with jobs that were, say, on a strictly commission basis where they couldn't make their payments on their houses. So they stayed in as long as they could till they were pushed out. And in the meantime, everything went to rack around the place. They wouldn't even turn a hose on. What would you say to a white community that is facing an open housing law and facing blacks slowly moving into their neighborhood? Oh. If they came in slowly, all right. But ours was just like an avalanche. All of a sudden, somebody would say, they'd come in here at the store and they'd say, I'm moving. And I said, well where, well, where are you moving? Well, I'm sure getting out of Compton. Now, why get out of Compton? Well, I don't know, but ever so-and-so is moving, I don't want to live here if they're gone. Fight it. Stand your ground and fight it. Or work along together. Fighting doesn't do any good, but work along together. But thinking you can run to someplace else and keep anybody out, you can't do it. If they've got the money to buy, they're going to buy, anyone's going to buy any place they want to. Well, I think an ideal community is one that is reasonably integrated, and that's what the future holds, and that's the way it should be. Should Not be like separated. Compton. Uh, to have one, I don't like, to, I, I'd like to see it 50-50, mm -hmm. uh, not 85-15, and that's about what we are right now. And the others are going to have to watch out because they'll go the same road. If people don't want to stay in a town, nothing can make them stay if they want to sell. Now, you can't right now sell a house to anyone but a colored person in Compton. A white will not buy a house in Compton. And Linwood, within five years, is going to be the same way. I know because I have two friends that are in the real estate business. And they tell me the same thing. Okay. Okay, this is Mayor Douglas 1S Dollar Hyde, U L L A R H I D E. And um, we'll be talking here in a minute. Let's start off with the with the hard one first. Can blacks govern themselves? Of course. Uh, here in the city of Compton, we have many very fine uh, black administrators and black elected officials, and I think we're doing quite well. And, uh, there's no question about us being able to govern ourselves. You have problems, a very high crime rate for one. 
a very high crime rate. Let me explain that to you. If you take uh, the incidence of crime, yes, we have a high crime rate. If you take dollar value, we'd probably have a low crime rate. Uh, perhaps, perhaps in one of the richer cities that the crime rate uh, in one night, uh, if you measure the dollar value, would, uh, would exceed that of Compton for a whole year. But why the high incidence of crime? All right. You, you have a... Uh, a great number of youth in the community. So you have youngsters running around breaking an antenna off a car, or you, you have someone taking a, a cheap tra transistor radio, or little things like that. Or then you have some of the older, rougher guys that might come in and snatch some old lady's purse or something like that. But now if you take and add all of that up, it wouldn't come to uh, what would be lifted in one of the rich cities, you know, in jewelry or some art gallery that's robbed and someone take the very expensive uh, paintings and so forth. Uh, the company don't have any, anything of that nature, you know, taking place where people are, are really going all out lifting $10,000 or $100,000 worth of jewelry or furs or things of that nature. What's happening in the company is, is a few little petty crimes, you know, 10 to maybe three or four hundred dollars. I thought you had 47 murders last year. Now, that's a problem of domestic quarrels and so forth. There's no way you can control a, a domestic outbreak where all of a sudden on an impulse someone kills another. And it's perhaps because so many people in the community uh, have guns, and I don't know why so many people like to have guns around, but uh, that's perhaps the reason for that. Sounds like you're describing an all-white community rather than an all-black. We There is a tendency to look at Compton because it is a, a large, all 72% black community and say, look, there are problems here and can't well, they make it? But black people and white people are pretty much the same. You know, I, for a year I sat on uh, jury duty, uh, did jury duty, and I noticed that the crimes of blacks and whites, they were pretty much the same. Uh, the crimes that are different are if you have a Mexican-American or Oriental or someone, their crimes are different. But uh, I, I come to the conclusion that the only difference between a black man and a white man is the texture of his skin. His habits are pretty much the same, and uh, the, the habits that black people have are the same habits that the white people have. If you were to carve out an area in any large city throughout the United States where 72% of the people were black, you would perhaps come up with the same figures and ratio of crime. And that's because of the same condition, the social conditions. Then does Compton have rather unique problems because it is black? Uh, yes, we're, you know, as far as crime is concerned, that's unique because we're 72% black. Take Los Angeles, it's 17% black. So when you start averaging out uh, the crime, it, it's different. But if you take an area in Los Angeles that's 72% black and with the same other ethnic proportions as Compton has, I think the figures would come out the same as they are in Compton. Why is that? Well, I think I stated it. It's that the blacks are the last to be hired, the first to be fired, and they came from many, most of them came from down south where they had unequal educational opportunities for the last 300 years, and they're not equipped to compete in a society where uh, very high skills are needed. Comparing yourself with an adjacent community and someone in the same position, another mayor there, would you say that you had more difficult problems because of those that you just stated than, than he might have with a white middle class community? But the same population there? Uh, yes, a comparable population because of, uh, because of the things you just stated. Well, if, if this population is majority whites, whereas whites have had better opportunities, and even if a white and black uh, have the same educational uh, requirements, I mean, uh, uh, opportunities, they, uh, the white's going to get hired first, and he's going to be given more consideration. And the blacks have, uh, uh, they, in a sense, uh, you can understand why there's hostility among blacks uh, because of uh, the, the racial attitudes in the country that have prevailed for the last 300 years. And as a result, blacks even sometimes take it out on other blacks. Once the hostility is, has been developed within a person, that you don't know who they're going to take it out of. Is that the case here in Compton? Do you feel that? Oh, I don't think we have a great number. Of, oh, let's see, the big problem is that it's not that there are so many people uh, that are committing the crimes. We have a problem with recycling criminals. Our criminal justice system is not uh, adequate. Uh, and this is not due to municipal government. You see, the criminal justice system has to relate to the county and the state and so forth. And the problem is here that uh, it's the same criminal that commits the crime over and over and over again. But due to this, uh, the fact that judges turn them loose, uh, they are recycled right, right back out in the community to commit the same crimes or even worse crimes than they committed uh, originally. And uh, if, if you could pick up, say, two or three hundred criminals and put them away, I think it would just about resolve, you know, the majority of the crime problem. Same thing I hear in the white community. Yeah, yeah 
this. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as here. <laughs> they really turn these criminals right back out here in the street on the people over and over again. And you had more to, to begin with than I suppose the other communities. Well, too, I, I haven't checked with the police department recently, but we did find a few years ago that most of the crimes being committed in Compton were from outsiders. We're located to, right next to uh, one of the larger metropolitan cities in the country, and, and if we have an overflow of people that come down to Compton to commit their crimes because of the failure of the criminal justice system in the community, they feel that they can come into Compton and commit a crime and then get out. And uh, if they get caught, well, they bring them back down here, and they'll just be recycled, as I said. And, and uh, that it's easier to commit the crime in Compton and get away with it than it is in some other place. Why is it easier here? Well, you get a white liberal judge in a city like Compton that's all black. He doesn't want to make any waves. He doesn't want to antagonize the black community. So he pets the criminal. But I, I really think these judges are, many of them should get out and talk with some of the people in the community and, and really learn how they feel about it. Because they aren't satisfied with the uh, the system as it works right now. That they, they don't want anyone to feel sorry for these criminals. A few people do, you know. But usually the ones that hollow the loudest are the ones who are, who are involved uh, in, the, in the criminal process themselves. Seems almost ironic. They're beautiful psychologists. They really know how to use psychology on the white liberal judges. Here we finally have, <laughs> here we finally have a city where uh, the mayor is black, police chief, fire department, many of the city council members, and yet the problem rests, as you say, with a white liberal judge. A white liberal judge and an adequate uh, probation department. There are many of these uh, fellows that have committed crime. So they, uh, they are paroled and the probation officer only see them once every six weeks. And uh, he, he's not able to keep up with them. You, you see, the problem is that they have a system whereby uh, they assign so many district attorneys, so many probation officers, so many judges to, to each area according to the uh, um, um, amount of cases and the caseload. But the caseload in this area is a little bit unique. Uh, the persons uh, that uh, are on probation need a little bit more attention, perhaps. Than With that kind of a crime problem, the fallout of scaring people away, scaring industry and commercial ventures away is also rather serious, isn't it? Uh, definitely. And it's one of the reasons we rather not play it up too much, but we, we, we have the problem and, and we like to sort of express to the people why we have it, but uh, I don't know, they don't bother the industrialists that much, you know, the ones that are here. Uh, most of these crimes are committed in the s small stores and a few homes being burglarized or liquor stores or something of that nature. Not anything is as, as large as are, you know, one of the industrial uh, properties. It's not a great deal. We've been talking in negative terms for a while. Let's shift gears if we can. Um, Compton is sort of a model city in the sense that it's the largest uh, black governed city west of the Mississippi. And, and our countless eyes are on you expecting can they make it. Has Compton made it under black leadership? Oh, definitely. Uh, we're doing quite well. We have some very competent administrators. We're very competent elected officials. And uh, we're doing just as well as any other city. And the people, uh, they seem to be quite pleased. Very frequently uh, have people stop me in the restaurants and places there about the city. And they say, well, our Mayor Dollhide, you fellows are certainly doing a fine job down at City Hall. And uh, I just wanted to pass the word on to you that we're behind you. And we appreciate what you're doing. And we've done a lot of things here, like widening the street, upgrading the uh, parks, and uh, developing programs for our senior citizens. And, and uh, oh, we've uh, beautified a lot of areas within the city, and our industrial park is progressing something from, like, from four to six months ahead of schedule, and we have some of the finest industrial uh, plants within the uh, country here. In fact, this cabin, cabin in Forbes consists of 540 acres of industrial property, and it's it's really one of the best tracks west of the Mississippi or anywhere in the West. As far as the problems that we were discussing earlier? With the... Uh, uh, regard to crime? And or the, oh, yes, that, the crime, that, like I said, that doesn't uh, uh, affect the industrial parks that much. It's uh, The crime uh, only affects the citizen uh, that's running a small business or the homeowners. City finances. Uh, have you, you've never gone bankrupt, certainly. You have one of the highest tax rates, though. We have a very high tax rate because we have a lot of young people, and they are being taxed to support the schools. The city has not raised taxes in the last three years. 
Um, then the industrial park uh, will bring in close to $2 million, I guess, this year. I can't remember the exact figure. I think last year it was uh, 1800000 So I would think this year we should exceed over $2 million in taxes from the industrial park. Now, a great amount of that money will go into the schools, again, because uh, it takes an awful lot of money to run the schools. The school budget is somewhere in the area of $45 million, whereas the city is operating off of around $15 million. And of that $15 million, about $5 million uh, is federal money that we're getting through uh, our model cities programs and redevelopment uh, uh, of the city. So uh, actually, we're uh, the city tax, the money that we uh, are spending out of the revenues derived through the city are, are somewhere around 9 or $10 million. What do you say to the people who come in and say, Compton's really on the skids. Look here, it has black leadership and it hasn't made it. Well, what happens is that there were whites who moved out of Compton. Not, not all whites, most of the whites around Compton. Very nice people. But there were this handful who, when they moved out, they said, ah, Compton's going to the dogs. Then we have uh, some black people who think like white people. And they also say, well, yeah, Compton's had it, it's going to the dogs, but they're only minority. The, the, people are buying in Compton every day, and you can drive up and down the street and see people adding uh, rooms onto their houses or building a new garage or uh, doing something to improve their property, and they certainly must have confidence in the city, and they wouldn't be spending money to improve their properties. And the majority of the citizens up and down the street do not complain. Most of the complaints come from people who ran for a public office and lost, or they intend to run uh, with a coming up this year, they anticipate running for an office, so they give the city a bad name and give the officials a bad name. But the real uh, uh, concerned citizen about the city of Compton, they don't have too many complaints. If, if they have complaints, they are constructive complaints and many times legitimate. One observation was that uh, black leadership has really only been in power for a few years, and even they need some time to gain experience. That's correct, and, and actually Compton is sort of a training ground uh, for many blacks. Uh, we had one gentleman here that was a city manager for uh, a couple of years, and then he resigned and went to Kansas City, which is much larger than Compton. He went to Kansas City as an assistant uh, city manager. We sort of felt like we trained him here, you know, and uh, there are many young blacks that work here for a while, and they go on to other jobs, and it's, uh, we're sort of a training ground for many of them. We're a training ground for a lot of whites, too, a lot of whites there <laughs> on our police department and fire department are all leaving. Most, in fact, most of the people who leave our departments are whites. And once in a while, someone will quote the figure and say, well, why do so many employees leave? Well, when the, uh, the whites, the city being 72% black, and there are some who resent the fact that the top echelon is black, and they will leave the city to seek employment in an all-white city. And uh, so when someone quote the figures that uh, about the employees leaving, we said, well, compare them and see how many are white and how many are black, and the majority of them are white. And I wouldn't say that all the whites left Compton are bigots, uh, or, you know, they just resented having white, uh, I mean, black superiors. I, I think they may have other reasons for leaving. Is the police department adequate to handle the crime problem? Well, we're having a study made of it right now to just determine whether it's really adequate to handle it or not. And uh, we have revenue sharing money that uh, we can use that to help upgrade the, the department as soon as we can determine just exactly what the problems are. Do the black policemen have any problems within this black community? Uh, because they're policemen? Well, some people have an antipathy towards the policemen. They don't care what color they are. And uh, they have... Uh, perhaps just about as much of a problem uh, as, or maybe not quite as much as a white, but they have their problems too, but um, it's only with that criminal element. Anyone dealing with a criminal element, a person that has no intention of doing what is right or abiding by the law, uh, they naturally resent their law enforcement agencies. They, they resent the establishment as a whole, whether it's a policeman or whether it's the mayor or a councilman or anyone else. Uh, when a person is uh, determined to do wrong, then they are certainly opposed to those people who are enforcing the law. Other questions? Compton was the dream for the black man for a long time. The palm tree in the front yard, two cars in every garage, just as Los Angeles uh, really attracted a lot of white people that moved. Is it still the dream? Of course it is. Actually, Compton is a gold mine for a black man. In fact, I 
hope that perhaps the council could find their funds to uh, appoint someone just to go out into the all of the United States and seek out black people and ask them to move to Compton to open up nice stores in Compton. There's a, you know, with so many opportunities here for small businessmen. And if we had more black businessmen in the city of Compton with some expertise in the fields of opening up stores like uh, uh, millinery shops or shoe stores and just small business like that, they could make a fortune here. There's really an opportunity for them. Uh, most of the people that live in Compton, most of the blacks, they moved in here, they had jobs, and they were quite, you know, secure uh, job-wise when they moved in, that is, the homeowners and so forth. And so they, they're not desirous of going downtown, going into business. So we have a lot, have a lot of homeowners with money to spend, and uh, they would be willing to shop here in Compton. And, uh, I mean, they are willing to shop here in Compton when they find the right merchandise and so forth. And we really need uh, black businessmen, and it's a, it's a golden opportunity for them. This is one of the problems also, been the fact that it's been a dream city and offered some low rental uh, opportunities for people in Watts, uh, low-income uh, families to move into the city. Uh, I now see some houses that are boarded up. Perhaps mortgages can't be kept up. Or... Chamber, let me go further. Chamber of Commerce, uh, gentlemen, describe pockets of poverty within the city of Compton that uh, give rise perhaps to high crime rates, uh, to some of the inner city problems that we hear about in the larger core areas. I, I don't understand your question. I understand your statement. Okay. But is, that a, is that a problem? Uh, well, you know, uh, for a while here, there was a cutback in the development of uh, certain uh, air um, programs that, you know, building of the airplanes with Douglas, Lockheed, or some of them lost their contracts. And uh, perhaps a few people lost their jobs and lost their homes, perhaps one of the reasons for houses being boarded up. And I might say that um, I think, too, that uh, real estate brokers really at one time were selling houses to people who couldn't afford them in the first place. And perhaps some people moved in and bought some of these homes. The whites were in a big hurry to get out, and they were making all kind of quick deals just to get out. They'd almost given the houses away. And they probably gave the houses there, you know, to someone who couldn't pay for them or, you know, put them in with a very small down payment and worked out some kind of paper deal that just didn't work. And I would think that that was perhaps the cause of that. Some people tend to think of Compton as a big city, not necessarily even a suburb but not far from a, a core city, an inner city, but with some of the inner city problems, high crime rate, uh, some behavioral violence problems in the schools, things you might see downtown in Watts. Well, Compton is, you know, if you notice the signs around it, said the hub city. We're in the center of greater metropolitan Los Angeles area. So we are surrounded by all of these cities. We're, we're right in the center of it all. <laughs> and so, so you're going to get everything? Yes, we get a little bit of everything, and <laughs> sometimes more than our proportion. Okay. Thank you. So I didn't take that question. Um, what can we learn from Compton, if Compton is indeed uh, the future? I, I think you can learn one thing, is that there are a lot of blacks around who are capable of articulating uh, municipal government. Uh, I think heretofore, most cities thought, well, there weren't as many capable blacks, or there were no capable blacks. And uh, I think we've proven that there are. Uh, I think that uh, each city uh, problems are going to be a little different, like some of the eastern cities are, are becoming black. They have more industry to work with. And perhaps we'd be a very good example because if, if we can make it, well, then the cities back east with all of their large industry and, and commerce uh, should be able to make it much better than we have been able to uh, move ahead because we have very little industry and we, uh, we have accelerated our business and industry contrary to what most people think. In fact, today in Compton, there are more banks and loan companies than ever in the history of the city of Compton. And there, there are more industrial plants in the city of Compton than ever in its history because we have 540 acres that are that is just delegated to nothing but business and industry besides all of the business and industry that was here uh, when the whites left. They're still here, the great majority of it. You inherited essentially a bedroom community didn't you, for Los Angeles? Yes, it's they're pretty much a bedroom community. There are, there are a few steel plants, you know, like fabricating uh, or recycling steel, and uh, then we have uh, places that make giftware and, you know, pottery and stuff of that nature, plastic companies, and uh, 
small industries. But uh, with the since the blacks have taken over, we have Datsun, Sony, Cray, uh, Samson West. Uh, we have Nippendizier. We have Lucas Electric Company. We have Pogans or Bakery. That's a Scandinavian outfit. And uh, Sino. Mattel Toys, Octagon, which build musical instruments. Uh, we have Bridgestone Tires, Pirelli Tires, uh, Kabuto Tractor Company, and many others that don't come to mind right now. But those are some of the new industries that have come into the city since blacks have taken over. Washington, President Obama meets with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, among them one new leader gaining national attention. She is on a mission to rid Compton, California of its reputation for gangs and violence. Bill Whitaker shows us why she went back to a place that brought her family heartache. You are mayor, right? Yes, sir. Spend time with the mayor of Compton, California. The handshakes and hugs. You guys ready? The pictures and praise. My vote counted. My wife was very happy Thank about you for it. Your support. It's I'm obvious 31 year old Asia Brown loves interacting with people. Today. My name is Asia Brown. I'm the mayor of Compton. And is passionate about public service. That title to me just means the biggest servant. So Less obvious, this immaculately groomed urban planner is a fighter. I've dedicated my career to really working in underserved communities and really just being in the trenches. She faces tough battles in Compton high crime, high poverty poor schools, but the biggest, she says, fighting the city's notorious image immortalized by hometown rappers from NWA in the 80s to Kendrick Lamar today. Most people think of Compton, you know, a place of gangs, and drugs, and guns, and prostitution. I think Compton definitely um, has um, pieces of that. A big piece is crime. This city of 97,000 has one of the highest murder rates in the state. So it's not just an image problem, you have a problem. Compton definitely still has its issues and you know, that's no mistake, but we are definitely addressing those issues as a community, I think for the first time in a very long time. For Mayor Brown, Compton's crime is personal and happened right here on this block. Um, my grandmother was a victim of a home invasion and someone broke into her home and um, raped and murdered her. Raped and murdered her. Mm -hmm. Her family fled Compton. Brown grew up miles away near Pasadena. But yet you chose to come back to a place that had so much personal pain for your family. Why? Compton is definitely a part of my, my family history, a part of me. Why not go back to a place that I believe, you know, really had a great need, a city that just really needs some hope. To many here, first time Mayor Asia Brown represents hope. She ran against a former mayor who'd been convicted for corruption. She won in a landslide. She inherited a city that was demoralized, a budget that was busted. You came in here and there was a huge budget deficit. Yes, yes. What have you done about that? We what have, have you done about we that? We have put in some great financial control. So for mm -hmm. the first time in over six years, um, Compton has a balanced budget. We actually have a budget surplus. Compton had a deficit of places to buy fresh produce. So Mayor Brown started a farmer's market. It's kind of just um, bringing healthy food back to the community. So She's working to attract new businesses, coffee. to reconnect law enforcement with the community. The crime rate is inching down. I was really impressed by the energy that she has and the vision that she has and the desire to make this city better. I think the only difference between the city of Compton and a neighboring community or any other community is really the zip code and the mindset. It's just really about challenging people to take ownership of our community. She points to a revitalized Brooklyn, New York as a model for Compton. It's almost hip to, you know, be from Brooklyn or to live in Brooklyn. It would be hip to, to live in, in Compton. Absolutely. Hip, instead of hip hop. Right. <laughs> Compton, revitalized, re energized, reborn. Now that's an image Asia Brown can live with. For CBS This Morning, Bill Whitaker, Compton. Go, Mayor Brown. Yeah, what an amazing Brown, nice story. From Pasadena to Compton, you would think that would be the last place you'd want to go. So wow. inspiring. Such a brave, amazing young woman. Wow. I think so too. And she's 31. I know, even younger He's than 30 me. He's 30 something. <laughs> They're amazing.